So bago na tapos ang 2020, may natanggap ako something from our friends over at Huawei Philippines. And I would like to say thanks to our friends over at Huawei Philippines for sending me this Huawei Mate 40 Pro para i-review natin dito sa ating channel. I'm more than excited, no? I-review tong super duper okay, awesome na flagship and tara, let's get our hands on this one. So hi guys, ako pala si Richmond ng Gadget Sidekick and welcome back to my channel. And makita natin, kaka-unbox lang natin ang Huawei Mate 40 Pro. Sabi ko sa inyo, ang ganda ng kanyang flagship, no? Mystic Silver and dito sa aking kamay. And mas sabi ko sa inyo, ang ganda, no? Yung color niya. Pag every time na may tumatama na ilaw dito, nag-iiba yung kanyang color. Parang rainbow finish. Then, kakaiba tong space ring niya, no? It's really something different. Kung nakuha niyo pa yun, Pro Plus, lima ang kanyang camera sa kanyang space ring. But right now, we have the Mate 40 Pro, which is the current best flagship available here sa Huawei Philippines. And, mas sabi ko sa inyo, it's really something that you should try if you have the extra cash. Grabe, mas sabi ko sa inyo, it's really one of the best camera I have ever tested. So, it's currently the number one sa DxO Mark na pinatalsik lang nila currently ang Xiaomi Mi 10 Ultra as the former number one sa DxO Mark. Eh, masasabi ko sa inyo guys, ang sobrang ganda ng kanyang camera, no? They are currently the number one sa DxO Mark ranking, no? Kakatalbog lang nila kay Xiaomi Mi 10 Ultra as the former number one, which is andito rin sa kamay ko. Gagawa ko rin sila ng camera battle, no? In one of the future episodes dito sa Gadget Psychic, so do stay tuned for that. And right now, i-breakdown na natin ang specs netong phone na ito. At before natin tuloy, talakayin ang Mate 40 Pro dito sa ating channel. 
Meron pinadala sa ating friends natin over at Shandy Philippines ang beetle case ng Mate 40 Pro. So, bagong-bago ba tong case to? And siguro narinig nila, nagkaroon ako ng case. Immediately, pinadala na ako ng case. So, para ma-protected ang aking phone. I've been using Beta for one of the longest time. No? And sobrang tibay na ito. Kada laglag, kada bump. Okay, ito ang mga corners na, nagtatangga, na sumasalo ng mga, mga shock. No? So, tapilasin natin. And itry natin muna itong phone na ito. Oops. Wait, not bad. Ah. Hmm. Fit na fit sa aking Mate 40 Pro. Thank you, Shandy Philippines. So going back, itong phone na ito, meron siyang Kirin 9000 na 5G. This is the world's first 5 nanometer na chipset. And meron siyang dalawang configuration. Either go for 8256 of storage or 8512 gig of storage. Which is pretty, pretty huge for me. Sobra-sobra na 256 eh. Pero kung binigyan mo ng 512, well, why not? Still better if it's always bigger. And pareho sila may UFS 3.1 na read and write speed. So right now, ibubot up lang natin ating phone. Yun. So nakabot up na siya. And this is the current screen ko out of the box, which is for me very, very nice kind of wallpaper. And what I like about this is yung kanyang 6.76 na OLED display. HDR10 na rin siya guys to. And 90 hertz ang kanyang screen refresh rate. Ang ganda na experience using this phone, no? as compared sa my mga flagship. I come from the Mate 30 Pro, no? and it, pinag side-by-side ko sila. No? Maganda rin ang Mate 30 Pro, pero syempre, of course, every time na nagkaroon ng bagong version, there's always improvement. Ang screen nito is bigger than kay Mate 30 Pro, and yung kanyang, ano, no? yung kanyang display feel ko para mas maganda, mas smooth. Yung lalo yung addition ng 90Hz screen refresh rate is a big deal for me. Kasi, Marami na na-try ng mga flagship, no? 120, 144, 90Hz. Iba eh. Iba talaga yung transition niya eh. Mas battery smooth nga talaga sa mata ang higher refresh rate. And this phone also comes with a 1344 by 2772 pixel which is very very large sa kanyang screen. And guess what? Ang front and back niya are both made of glass. And yung sides niya is made of aluminum print. Making this phone very very durable. One of the industry's best. Now guys, tingnan muna natin ang kanyang Antutu benchmark, no? Siguro one of the few for me, ah, sa channel ko na nakahit ng 600,000 points dito sa Antutu, uh, Mi 10 Ultra being the other one and the Mi 10 Pro. Kasi they both have the Snapdragon 865, which is the, be the best from Snapdragon right now. Ito, nakakirin 9,000, which is current best and first ever 5 nanometer chipset ni Huawei. So, tinignan natin ang kanyang DRM Info. Binigyan siya ng wideband level 1. Meaning, pwede tayo manood ng HD dito sa Netflix. Sa phone na ito. So, medyo na-excited ako and nag-try din ako ng ibang benchmark. So, dito sa i22 benchmark, 173,000 points. Sa kanyang Slingshot Extreme, 5,160. Sa kanyang Geekbench, 930 ang single core. And 3,392 ang kanyang multi-core. So, tinignan natin ang kanyang screen refresh rate. Totoo nga, 90Hz ang kanyang screen refresh rate. Dito sa refresh rate checker na app. So, so much for the benchmark now. So, right now, gusto natin itry ang kanyang gaming kung gamit ka ganda. So, playing Call of Duty, masasabi ko siya, no, wow, guys, this is probably one of the best experiences na laro ko sa Call of Duty. Very, very nice. Ang kanyang display, very, very bright ang kanyang screen. Then, very, very punchy, no, ang kanyang graphics. Pagdating sa game, masasabi ko siya, very smooth. As far as I'm concerned, wala naman ako nakapansin ng lag for so playing in 30 minutes. Then, dito naman sa Genshin Impact, aba, the same. Very, very smooth. Si Genshin Impact, medyo matangkat ka ng graphics niya. And, sabi siya niya, smooth naman siya, hindi naman siya nag-lag. Yung kanyang mga kasyon dito, very, very nice and very, very smooth sa akin ka. Siguro, nag-kick in ang 90 hertz sa screen of that day. So guys, sinan din natin manood ng HD videos dito sa YouTube on this phone. And, sabi siya niya, well, other than yung malaking ano, no, dual punch hole sa ibabaw ng screen, other than that, wala namang ibang reklamo. No? Medyo ako, I'm not really too much of a big fan ng mga double punch hole, single punch hole, and whatever punch hole uh, sa screen. No? Gusto ko talagang purong-puro yung screen. Akin na akin yung screen. Yung walang sagabal. Pero other than that, okay naman sa kanya. Display, very very nice. Yung chin is very pretty small. And halos, wala na ako makitang bezel dito sa gilid kasi curved screen display si 
Huawei Mate 40 Pro. So guys, talakayin natin ang kanilang camera. Meron siyang 50MP na aperture 1.9 wide main sensor. This is powered by Leica, which is probably one of the industry's best for the things sa smartphone photography, no? Then, sinama pa siya ng 12MP na periscope telephoto lens. Then, 20MP na ultra-wide lens. This is the triple camera setup na meron ng Huawei Mate 40 Pro. Sa harap, sabi ko sa inyo kanina, dalawang kanyang punch hole. So, meaning dalawang kanyang camera lens. So, meron siyang 13MP na front shooter. As well as, sinama pa siya ng 3D na depth sensor sa tabi ng 13MP na front shooter. So, syempre, nabangit na natin ang kanyang camera specs. Tingnan naman natin ang mga camera sya na nakuha natin dito sa phone na ito. So makita natin no, ang mga shots, halos wala nang masabi. Tatak Leica, tatak Huawei na Mate series. It's really, for me, one of the best phone, best vlogging phone in uh, sa, sa market right now. No? Eh, masasabi ko sa'yo, I've been using the Huawei Mate 30 Pro as my main vlogging camera. Right now, meron na kabagong vlog phone, which is ito. And I'm very, very proud na meron ako neto for my vlogging purpose. And tignan natin yung mga selfie shots. Masasabi ko sa inyo, no? yung mga shots na to is a big step up from the Huawei Mate 30 Pro. Yung Mate 30 Pro, minsan may times na medyo makafeel mo medyo wash out pa kunti ang aking mukha eh. Pero dito parang masasabi ko, every single detail counts. Pag zoom ko sa aking PC, masasabi ko, uy, okay ah. Ang ganda ng graphics na itong mukha ko. Lalo na kung yung mga uh, portrait shots, masasabi ko yung mga edges to edges ng aking mukha, very, very pulido. Tingnan naman natin itong phone using for vlogging, no? Sa rear camera. <tinyo> Camera of the Huawei P40 Pro, eh. The camera of the Huawei Mate 40 Pro is really, really something that you like to consider when you're looking for a good phone for vlogging. It's pretty stable, pretty sharp, and you can see the colors are really punchy, very, very lively. You can see the sky, it's really, really nice. The clouds is very, very defined, and yeah, it isn't the DxO Mark number one camera for nothing. Ayun, masabi ko sa inyo. Well, what more can I say? Talagang itong phone na ito is probably one of the best vlogging phone like I said kanina. Tara, tingnan natin ang kanyang front camera for vlogging. Hey guys, this is how it looks like when you're vlogging using... Uh, hey guys, this is how it looks like when you're vlogging using the front camera of the Huawei Mate 40 Pro. And it's pretty, pretty stable, pretty, pretty sharp. And I really love the color and it's really punchy. Though at some dark spot, it's a little bit dark, but overall when you're on pretty good sunlight and pretty good lighting, it's gonna be a very, very nice front camera for vlogging, really.
So guys, right now we're vlogging using the front camera of the Huawei Mate 40 Pro and it really looks nice. This one replaced my P30, uh, this one replaced my Mate 30 Pro as my main vlogging camera right now outdoors and it really looks smooth. Check it out as I try to speed myself. Well, though, there are still some dark spots, but uh, give me some pretty good lighting. It's pretty, pretty good. And yeah, let's take a quick look. Let's see how good it goes. Not bad. And this is the output of the Huawei Mate 40 Pro 4 front video camera for vlogging. Ayun, so masabi ko, okay na okay ang kanyang front camera no, pagdating sa vlogging. And I've used this camera to vlog fully yung copper mask na video ko. No? So I'll post a link below para makita nyo kung gano'ng kaganda and gano'ng ka-smooth ang transition no, using the front camera. Take note, yung front camera, di ba rear camera, 13MP sa pag-vlog. So guys, meron siyang built-in na in-screen fingerprint scanner. And masasabi ko sa inyo, very very fast ang kanyang ano no. Tara, itry natin. Mabilis ang kanyang ano, no? reaction, no? di ba? Halos wala pang 1 second na unlock ko na ang aking phone. So guys, sinabi ni Huawei meron siya 4,400 mAh na battery which is for me medyo maliit compared sa mga industry standard na 5,000. Pero bumawi siya, sinamahan niya ng 66 watts na fast charging capability kasama ng 66 watts ang kanyang charger, no? Then, tinry natin i-charge tong phone na ito. Dinry natin down to 9%. Then, chinarge natin pabalik ng 100 using the default cable and the default charger. Inabot lang tayo ng 42 minutes, guys. Ang bilis magkarga na itong phone na ito. So, other than that, kaya pa niya mag 50 watts of wireless charging and 5 watts na reverse charging. So, tinay natin mga battery stress test dito sa phone na ito, no? And, niran natin si PC Mark, magpadamagan, no? Nilagyan natin sa 50% ang kanyang screen brightness para neutral lang ang ating testing, no? Hindi, hindi maximum, hindi rin minimum. So, nakuha natin ang score na 11 hours and 36 minutes, which is for me, pwede na, kasi flagship siya, medyo matakot sa kanyang battery. Pero, mapapansin mo ang kanyang performance talaga, bigay na bigay. Okay na okay siya pagdating sa kanyang performance though. Hindi ka mabibitin sa phone na ito eh pagdating sa performance. Then of course, one of the best partners for my Huawei Mate 40 Pro is the Huawei Watch GT2 Pro which is nakapair sa akin to since day one itong phone na ito. And masasabi ko sa inyo, natatrack down ko lahat ng aking uh, odometer, mga, aking mga stress monitoring, aking mga sleep monitoring, lahat na monitor ko dito sa aking Huawei Mate 40 Pro. And this phone comes in five colors though. May Mystic Silver, White, Black, Green, and Yellow. So, ang um, napili na pupunta dito sa atin is the Mystic Silver which is probably my favorite color sa batch na ito. So, makita natin sa ating SIM tray, meron siyang dalawang slot though. Either you go for dalawang Nano SIM or isang Nano Mem plus isang Nano SIM. Depende sa choice though. And yung Nano Mem can expand you up to 256 gig of storage additional. So after 2 weeks using this phone, no, masasabi ko sa inyo, no, nakapagdalaw video na ako using this phone. And ang dami ko mga photo shots using this phone. I'm very, very happy no, using this uh, flagship ni Huawei. And masasabi ko sa inyo, yung camera niya is probably yun ang pinakahabol ko dito sa phone na ito, ang kanyang Leica lens. So, ano masasabi ninyo dito sa phone na ito? For me, if you have the extra cash, extra budget, I can really say na you go for this phone. Marami magsasabi no na wala namang Google Play yan eh. Don't worry. Lahat yan magagamit mo ay madadaw ng mga apps sa app gallery. Kung wala sa app gallery, search nyo sa Petal Search app. And I've got a lot of tutorials on how to use it dito sa Huawei phones. So guys, ano tingin nyo dito sa phone na ito? Okay ba? 
Panalo ba siya as flagship? Comment kayo sa comment section below and magkaroon tayo ng maliit na discussion kung ano nga ba tingin nyo dito sa bagong flagship yung Huawei na siya ang nagpatumba kay Xiaomi Mi 10 Ultra as the number one phone sa camera pagdating sa DxO Mark. Hindi naman basta-basta magbibigay ng number one score no? si DxO Mark pagdating sa ranking. No? Dalaga kailang umabot ka dun sa certain criteria nila para bigyan ka nila ng magandang score. And very, very strict sila pagdating sa scoring no, sa DxO Mark. And I'm sure it's not a very, very easy achievement no, to do that. And kung nakapag-hit ka ng number one sa DxO Mark, you should really be proud. And I'm really proud to have this number one phone no, ng DxO Mark together with my Mi 10 Ultra. Abangan nyo guys, magkakaroon ng camera battle ng dalawang phone na ito. One of my future episode dito sa Gadget Sidekick. So if you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click that bell icon so you don't miss any future content dito sa aking channel. So I hope sana magkita-kita ulit tayo sa aking susunod na video. Paalam na muna sa inyo.